So as I mentioned, I was a, a financial advisor for a number of years. So I actually sold mutual funds and IRAs and 401ks for a living. And the idea behind that, it's, it's two fundamentally different schools of thoughts. So when I invest, I can invest for two things. I can invest for income or I can invest for capital appreciation, meaning my money goes up in value versus it pays me a monthly income. And so when I look at those two different things, I've got to look at pros and cons. When I was a financial advisor doing mutual funds, it was mostly capital appreciation. It was, you know, I'm going to dollar cost average every single month and put some money away into my funds. They're going to appreciate to a certain dollar amount or a certain nest egg. And when I'm, you know, 50 or 60 or whatever my age, I'm going to start selling shares to produce income. And so with that style of investing, um, what's not factored into it is increased inflation and increased taxes, right? So if we call inflation, you know, just to be conservative, let's call it a 3% average. If I buy a share of a fund, I have no control over whether or not it's going to go up 3%. I can't make it go up. There's nothing I can do. It's kind of just left up to chance. Now, the only thing I can do to offset that is I can save 3% more of my income every year, hoping I can keep up. Now, the first problem that creates is that creates a life of deferment. I'm putting off all of my, my living potential, my cost or my standard of living until I'm 60 or 65. It's all going towards that bucket. Um, now, the second problem is when I have that accumulation and style of investing happen, when I hit my nest egg, I'm selling the shares to produce income. Now, if I sell too many shares too fast, I run out of money. Statistically, the average retiree will run out of money by about age 70. That's about a 10-year window that they've got. And so there's that risk of I can't control it if it doesn't go up in value. I've got to defer my lifestyle, and there's a very high chance of running out of money. Now, the second style, which would be income investing, is I buy assets that pay me every month. And that can be rental income. That could be small business equity where sales pay me, and I'm maybe a passive investor. Um, that could even be private lending where I charge an interest rate, and I make money on that interest rate. Now, with that style of investing, I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm going to make money on it because it's, it's something where it pays me every month. And if I have to outpace inflation, I can raise rent. I can increase my interest rate. If it's an equity deal, I can increase sales in the company and I can kind of offset that. And then when I do hit that nest egg or that point where I'm ready to start taking that as a distribution, I don't have to sell anything. It, my, my money will pay me every single month and I don't have to touch my principal value. And it kind of comes down to if I have the golden goose, why in the world would I kill it for, for a harvest when it's laying golden eggs? So those are the fundamentally different schools of thought. If you're wondering what does Wealth Dynamics do, how can we actually help you? Number one, if you haven't gotten a copy of my book, Blueprint of Financial Freedom, grab one now. You can get that down in the uh, comments in the video. You can get the link for that. Number two, we do a free course on Fridays on personal finance. Hey, you can also get the link for the description there too. And then finally, if you have a desire to start getting help walking through these different phases toward financial freedom, book a call with my team, go to our website, set up a call, and we're able to help out and answer questions. That's how we can help you. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, make sure you turn notifications on, and I will talk to you guys on the next video.